what you have to look at is, are you willing to suffer for everyone else's well-being? And then really are these people in your life that you think you should suffer for really the right people for you? Because if your family, your friends or your colleagues are okay with you suffering in silence so that they don't have to go through some changes that they might find uncomfortable, then there is an inauthenticity to your relationship with them. And that may not be their fault. It m most of the time is often that you're not really showing up as yourself. You're doing that thing where you're pleasing all of them or wanting to make sure they're happy, but never asking them to consider whether you're happy. And so that is an imbalanced relationship. We all get into this. And often what we're worried about is pleasing others, upsetting others. And that's really what this dynamic reveals. So are you willing to upset yourself for the benefit of others that you're not even really sure about? Because we're often like, oh my God, this is going to upset them. You don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the other thing that I often see people doing this with is they worry about upsetting the person in their life who's pretty much upset at everything. They go, well, he gets so upset at everything. And I'm always like, well, then he really needs to do some therapy and become a bit more self-aware. Otherwise, he's going to have a very unhappy life. And you're not the cause of his upset. He came to you upset. And you've been in a relationship for 10 years and now you've got ground down in that relationship. So you now can start to live in the energy field of upset that you're going to compromise on because you had a big wedding and you don't want to offend all the family and friends who gave you a toaster or whatever. Um, that's no life to live and that's no good for anybody and that will kill you. I mean, that will kill your spirit. And so really what this is about is the challenge for you to go, I'm actually going to trust that choosing myself in this situation and my well-being is going to benefit all my friends and family. And perhaps some of the ones who I'm in conditional relationships with will react against me that will reveal to me, oh wow, they don't really care about me. They care about the way I serve them or they care about the role I'm playing in their life that makes their life happier. But they don't actually care if I turn around and say to them, well, actually, he's really mean to me all the time and I've tried everything and he's still mean and I'm upset a lot. And if their advice then is, well, you should stay with him because you had a big wedding and we all came and we're all very invested. Mm -hmm. That's very selfish. And it, it can be hard for people to get that, especially if there's a pattern that you've had all your life around pleasing others. And so it's tough. I mean, to be in that situation, I've been in relationships before where um, I, I was putting 25% of the true me into the relationship and um, kind of using my energy to smooth the relationship that I should have left earlier. I've, I've been in that a few times and um, it's hard when you're in it, but you have to get to the point where you recognize if there's imbalance in you and you're going to just live with it for the sake of everyone else, then there's imbalance in all of them. Otherwise, you wouldn't be choosing to just stay in stasis. And what you're really scared of is bringing change to this group of people who at some level have transmitted to you they don't want change. So you stay and you suffer in silence or you go, I'm leaving. You risk their reaction. You risk their discomfort. You risk losing a few friends, but you get you. You get you back and you get a second chance.